so let's talk about this with CNN political commentator and New York Times op-ed columnist Ross Douthit and CNN political commentator and host of HuffPost Live, Mark Lamont Hill. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. So, Mark, you heard the gentleman in Randy Kay's story. He's a Christian. He loves everybody, but the Bible tells him that you have to obey the law of the land, send the immigrants back. Is he right? Well, I think it's, a, it's so complex of an issue, we can't just say yes or no. In the case of these children coming over, sending them back is not only probably uh, following the law, it's also probably the healthiest thing to do, but we have to do it in a way that protects their dignity and also protects their health, protects their, their, their legal rights. That's why the president is asking for more stuff, I think, uh, financially speaking. But I think one of the challenges is we have these red herrings like border security and drug cartels, as we heard in the package. And those aren't really the issues here. Border security is working just fine right now. These kids aren't sneaking across the border. They're turning themselves in in hope of getting refuge for a few years. We have to analyze that and understand that we do have a different set of uh, uh, legal challenges for these children coming in from Central America than we do in the Mexican crisis. And oftentimes people are confusing those two things and it's making a log jam in Congress. Oh, well, I will say, Ross, that um, the Homeland Security Secretary say, s says deportations will begin today. Senator John mm -hmm. McCain came out over the weekend and said, deport these kids now. I mean, do it as humanely as possible, but you got to do what you got to do. So is that what's going to happen? Um, for some of them, yes. Uh, but you have to keep in mind that under U.S. law currently, and in part because of a law we passed back in 2008, many of these kids have the right to an asylum hearing. Um, and then many others initially, and maybe this is less the case now that it's getting so much national attention, but many others were released fairly early on with letters requiring them, in theory, to appear for asylum hearings. So you're looking at a large population in custody that has to work their way through the court system, and then probably a larger population that was taken into custody and then released. So you, it's not as simple as saying, you know, deport them tomorrow. The law won't allow for that. And you can make moves, and this is what the president is talking about, what Congress is talking about. There's a lot of argument about this to suspend or repeal some of the provisions requiring full hearings. But the problem there is, you know, I mean, as the gentleman, the gentleman that you quoted said, we, we, you know, we're a nation of laws and this was the law when these kids came across the border. So there's a sense in which any solution to the problem is going to take a long while and a fair amount of money and personnel to work through. And I'll just say quickly, I, I agree with most of what Mark said, but there is an element here where it, it's not so much that um, that you know these kids are involved in cartel business or anything like that but the fact that so much manpower so much border patrol manpower and money and so on is tied up dealing with this has made has cut down on the number of drug arrests drug interdiction and so on so there is it's not entirely crazy to see a connection here to the drug trade, even if it isn't as direct as being as involving the children themselves. Right. So the and I, and I agree with that. Go I just want to make sure that we don't. I just want to make sure that we don't criminalize the children in this, right. in this political discourse. And that's often what we see uh, happening. And I agree. The current law does allow for asylum, but the premise of the 2008 law was human trafficking and making sure that these right. kids weren't sent right back to the people trafficking them. We have to make sure that that complex set of legal processes for people in non-contiguous states remains in place. And I think uh, people have made the case, at least, that you, there are regulations within the current law that we could impose differently that would allow us not to have to revamp the entire law. There's an exceptional circumstance within the current law that says that we can make different choices. If we see these as, if we frame these as exceptional circumstances, meaning that we have to treat these children like the, like the Mexican uh, immigrant children in, in the sense of sending them back quickly because there's a humanitarian crisis that's enhanced by keeping them, by, by, by encouraging people to come here, uh, we might be able to do something right now and not have to wait for a wholesale immigration law, which is like waiting for Godot. <laughs> Well, I think you're well, right and about that. Well, and in well, fairness, well, President well, Obama has taken the view that he has a lot of latitude, let's say, in the enforcement <laughs> yes. of immigration law. So I think it, yeah, I think it, it's not entirely reasonable for the White House to say, well, we have to wait for Congress to act, given that they've shown a willingness to um, sort of, you know, pick and choose a little bit in terms of enforcement already. All right. Ross Douthat, Mark Lamont Hill, thanks so much. Thanks. Pleasure. I'll be right back.